Wow, this is gonna be kind of a personal episode for me because we're gonna revive my dream car, the 71 Roadrunner. Hit it! Unfortunately, it's kind of gutless, and yes, it's a one-legger. But this time, that doesn't matter that much to me because what I'm looking for here is to have a really nice daily driver. I don't need it super radical. I just need it completely reliable and looking okay. No. Oh, wow. It's holding it. Um, how about the axles, maybe? <laughs> he was trying to take the center section out of the rear end and forgot to pull the axles. That's good. You have the axles out this time? Yeah, you won't let me live that one down soon, will you? No. That was pretty bad. Boom! <sighs> that was pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. I'll be impressed if you can put it back in that way. Now the hard part is gonna be lifting this thing up here. I probably should be using a jack, but I think I'm gonna just try to do a bench press. I'll drop it on your chest. I think I'm gonna put it on my stomach. If you're gonna drop it at all, put it on your head. Really? Yeah. I thought we were friends. Look at that 276 posse going in. There we go. And then... Whoa. You dominated that installation. Bam! Look at that. Just like that. I got winded lifting that thing up, so it was hard to do that. I could tell. Yeah. Dulcich almost died improving my life. I would take it home. I would marry it. I would let it meet my parents. There you go. Roadkill rebuild. This is gonna look familiar because these are the exact same shocks that we installed on the crop duster a few episodes back. They're a QA1 stalker star, and frankly, they're radical overkill for what we're doing here because I got the double adjustable version, and uh, I just wanted it to be really, really great riding, and I wanted all that adjustability. So this is another roadkill example of way too good a part on way too bad a car, but it's gonna make it ride good, and that's what's important to me. Okay, if I go tight, it's hard to pull out, and then loosen it up, and whoop, adjustability in action. Call it a night. I think I'm pretty well done for today. We're nowhere near done. <laughs> Dude, you're a slave driver, Freiburger. Uh, well, Man. we're pretty much close to the mechanical thing. Once we get the brake seals, we'll end up finishing that up, and then it's all about making it spick and span. So this is step one to saving the paint. He's putting on uh, like professional compound. It's a Meguiar's number 84. We like to call it saucing up. Sauce it up. Okay, so wait, to begin with, Here's the difference, like, I'll put the stuff on the pad and swirl it around and you sauce up the panel directly. What's up with that? That's, this is the way it's done. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. It's a lot better. I see a little streakiness here and there, but We'll probably get that on the next step that Freiburger's gonna do. Are you done fooling around with that antiquated equipment? It's got, we've got two more steps, I gotta leave something for you. After Dulcich finished up with the wool pad on the buffer, I followed it up with the Meguiar's Ultimate Paint Restoration System. You can buy this as a kit, it comes with three different foam pads and three different materials. First of all, I hit it with a red pad using the Ultimate Compound, which further removes some stains. Next, I put the black pad on it, and that's with the ultimate polish, which is a glaze. It helps get rid of the swirl marks. And the final step is with the finest pad, which is the yellow one and the ultimate liquid wax. Uh, your buffer is actually pretty good. Oh man, you're admitting that the technology is actually... Yeah, yeah it's hard to win me over on something, a newfangled buffer like that, but... But it's true, right? It's not bad. Ready? Yeah. Peel it. Wow. 
Boom, look at that. That's unbelievable. Look, it even took this scratch out. You can see the scratch here, gone. Here we go. Wow, this is slow. Yeah. Wow, it doesn't seem to be reading. 40. Well, you've definitely gone through an eighth of a mile. Now it says race canceled. Huh, it didn't seem to actually work, oh, no. did it? Where the sense is acceleration braking. I think it might not have had enough acceleration for it to know that we were accelerating. <laughs> I think it's possible. No, I'm not buying it. Normally we wouldn't start a drag run in front of someone's house, but, <laughs> but in this case, it's virtually unnoticeable. Here we go. So ignition timing refers to when the spark goes off in relation to where the piston is in the cylinder. And the thing is it takes some time for combustion to happen and so you have to start the spark earlier than you would expect because you want peak cylinder pressure at 7 to 10 degrees after the piston's on top dead center and on its way down on the power stroke. So you have to light it off at wide open throttle at 3000 RPM at about 35 degrees before the piston hits top dead center on the compression stroke. And if you don't, basically you're losing all your peak combustion pressure and it's going out the exhaust. So we're gonna find out if it is. You wanna hook that up to number one? Lighting it too late. Fires right up. Maybe I should connect the coil wire again? Yeah. Okay. Okay, rev it up. So it only had 20 degrees of total ignition advance, which is nowhere near enough. We're gonna bump that up. Oh, here it just smooth right oh, out. that sounded nice. We just removed this induction setup from the Roadrunner. Now, this is a Holley 6619-1 carburetor, which would not be the original Holley for the car. Instead, I'm putting this 650 on it. Maybe a tiny marginal improvement in performance there. This carburetor does not have a secondary metering block like this one does. See how there's this fat block in here and there's not one here? The secondary fuel curve is not adjustable in this carburetor without changing a plate that's in there, which nobody really has. It's a nuisance. This has actual jets that are removable and so it's gonna be easier to tune. The other thing I'm doing is ditching the factory cast iron intake manifold for this DP4B. DP4B means Dodge Plymouth four barrel. This is like a day two kind of modification. A guy would go run out and purchase a car and then the next day he had to hop it up. This intake manifold was available when the car was new. You can see it even has a Chrysler part number on it. It was sold through direct connection at the time. And so this is sort of an era correct intake that's gonna add performance and save weight. And we'll be installing it with that Holly 650 vacuum secondary that I'm gonna modify with a quick change vacuum secondary pod. You ready? Yep. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna call it good, but it's not hideous. No. I've seen worse. That's not bad. That was pretty good. That's way better than I thought it was gonna be. I was 9.96 before, right? Yeah. No way. Quarter mile. Oh, what did I do? No, don't no. tell me you erased it. No. I was like hoping for a seven second. Isn't that what I said? How do I just go back? 90. Dude. Oh, 1594 at 91 miles an hour. Wow. That's huge. Wow, I was telling you 90 miles an hour wow. in the quarter would be great. Dude, we picked up 10 miles an hour. Holy cow, that's awesome. And that was a horrible leave. I know. 
Uh, wow, how I, come it doesn't feel that strong? I don't know, but didn't I tell you, man, if, this thing, if we can get it to run 90 in the quarter, that's pretty good. I know, you said you'd be excited. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. 10 miles an hour? Yeah. 